Hey everyone, we're taking a look at the NVS285 today, an NVIDIA Quadro graphics card which was part of the GeForce 6000 era from around a decade and a half ago. The closest regular desktop equivalent to the Quadro NVS285 I think would have been NVIDIA's GeForce 6500, which was also based on NVIDIA's Curie architecture, named after Polish-French physicist and chemist Marie Curie, except the 285's memory bust width was cut in half from 128 to 64 bits. I've put some more detailed specs up on screen, but the basics of the NVS285 are a core clock of only 275MHz, the 128MB of DDR2 memory it has running at 300MHz, which I think was a bit higher than the GeForce 6500, but I've not double checked to be sure. Support wise, there's only support for up to DirectX 9.0c and OpenGL 2.1 so no support for any modern day games, but it's not exactly powerful enough for modern day games today anyway. Other than that, you'll need an adapter to use this with any monitor you have, as it uses a DMS59 connector designed to be used with a multi-monitor setup in the workplace, although I'm using a DMS59 to HDMI adapter today. With that aside, the first benchmark is a modern day indie developed game from only a few years ago. The Adventure Pals is a fun little game developed by indie devs Massive Monster. It's quite simple graphically, so it's usually really easy to run hardware-wise, but it struggles a fair bit on the NVS285. I've turned every graphics setting off for the test, and as the game doesn't have resolution settings, I've had to manually change the resolution within Windows to 800x600. And as the game doesn't run in the more square 4x3 aspect ratio, it runs at what I think would be 800x450, with black bars on the top and bottom to make up the 4x3 aspect ratio. There's actually no stuttering or anything like that, but the only real issue, which is pretty noticeable, is how slow the game runs, which has the knock-on effect of noticeable input lag. It seems to be tied to the frame rate because I notice the game runs closer to normal speed, the closer to the 60fps limit you are. CSGO originally released back in 2012 and ran absolutely horribly on the NVS285. As if it was giving us a clue as to how it would run, even the menu when you first launch into the game couldn't manage more than single figures FPS wise. Once into a bot match, which is how I benchmarked the game, it became apparent just how unplayable it was, and it really was impossible to play. You've also probably noticed it by now, but several of the textures are also missing too, and are essentially just black voids now. Skyrim ended up being just as unplayable. It ran so badly in fact that I ended up having to find a mod called the Ultra Low Graphics Tool to reduce the graphics even further than the lowest settings. I'll link to the mod in the description below. With the mod installed now, let's see how much better the game performs. Oh, it's... it's still terrible. FPS had improved by one or two frames per second, and that was an actual repeatable improvement, and not just variance in performance. Input lag was better, but still really bad. I was actually going to continue going through the game to get benchmark figures anyway, until I got onto the trader in Riverwood, where performance was pretty much a slideshow. All of this was at 800x600, so if you can edit the INI file for the game to get a much lower resolution, then maybe you could get somewhat playable performance, but I don't have much hope for that. I've had a go at overclocking the NVS285, which actually improves performance quite a bit. But before that, let's try GTA San Andreas. This is a game that should run well enough, given that it's a couple of years older than the 285 itself, unlike the other games. I had to use the lowest settings at 800x600, but it actually ran really well and was more than playable. There wasn't any stuttering or hitching throughout the test at all, and the frame rate was quite often over 60, dropping no lower than around the high 30s. The low 0.1% low figures were probably caused by hitches that happened when a cutscene started that weren't part of the game part of the game, if that makes any sense. I think it's quite common for lower end graphics cards and processors to see big improvements from overclocking, and that's no different with the NVS285, so we'll have a look at what it's able to do after this. Unigen Heaven is what I normally use while overclocking graphics cards, and, well, if I hadn't launched the program myself, I wouldn't have known that whatever that is, is supposed to be Unigen Heaven. I think this is the same problem that CSGO had, where certain textures were missing and replaced with black voids. 
I can't say for certain why it happens, but I'm assuming the NVS-285 is possibly missing some bit of hardware or certain instruction sets that deal with those textures, causing what you saw in CSGO and what's on screen now. That aside, I increased the core clock speed a little and ran the benchmark each time to make sure it was stable, and hit a wall at 440MHz, as MSI Afterburner wouldn't go any higher. I was able to mod the BIOS to go higher, but it ended up being unstable in some games. The memory had a hard limit of 350MHz, but I was able to mod the BIOS again to get 382. The 285 could actually have managed more than that, but I'd stopped when I thought the stability issues were caused by the memory, before later on realising that it was actually the core clock that was causing it. But this is a pretty substantial overclock regardless. It made me think that Nvidia could have reduced the voltage that NVS285 runs at quite a bit given how much overclocking headroom there was. The Adventure Pals, which was stable with a slightly higher overclock, sees a significant improvement overall. Things still aren't perfect, but the game runs much closer to normal speed than it did pre-overclock and even manages to hit 60fps in parts. Although when it does hit 60fps, you see some noticeable micro stuttering. It doesn't happen that often though, so I think you could put up with that in return for a closer to normal speed game than before. CSGO was now able to run at a whole 12 FPS in the opening menu. I know, right? It wasn't quite stable with the same overclock as the Adventure Pals was, but considering how bad it still ran, it really didn't matter. Unlike Skyrim, there is no way that I know of to further reduce the resolution, so this is as good as it's going to get. Seriously though, the performance boost was still huge. Before, it was quite literally unplayable, whereas now I could at least play through the bot match well enough to get benchmark figures. Skyrim ended up running a lot better as well, but was just as unplayable as it was at stock. Initially I thought, oh, this is running well enough to at least benchmark, but then I got into the Riverwood Trader again and... yeah, nah. Again... Reducing the resolution through the game's INI &I file might help a little, but it's not going to get much better to be honest. Finishing off with GTA San Andreas then, and this sees a pretty big improvement too. I never really saw FPS drop under 60 throughout the entire of roughly 30 minutes of gameplay. A couple of times, but not really in the grand scheme of things. And it would often get into the 70s as well. There's barely anything to actually say about the benchmark to be honest, as the game performs so well with absolutely no issues at all. You might even be able to turn the resolution up, but I'm not sure how that's going to affect things. So, the NVS285, an NVIDIA Quadro graphics card released 16 years ago at the time of this video, isn't really of much use at all for anything even remotely modern. That's not really the point of my videos though because as much as I like taking the more scientific approach to the benchmarks, these videos are primarily about the fun of running games on hardware that they were never meant to be run on. Most of the time they run just about as badly as you expect them to, but there are times when you're like, oh I would never have thought that game would have at least been playable on a Core 2 Duo for example. Although saying that, the 285 will at least be able to play games such as GT San Andreas and presumably other games from around that era and before as well. Not bad for something it only paid a pound for. This is a part of the video I know lots of people are going to switch off at, but I do want to take the time to thank Patreon supporters Shadow in the Void and Matt Asterak, along with the others on screen now. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. Whether you've used one of these graphics cards before or are just interested in seeing how games run on hardware they were never meant to be run on. So thanks again for watching the video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.